Welcome to the Church of Anthios and welcome to Tasa's Tithe Collecting. As far as opening hand goes, yes, I like it. We're going to keep on this one. Uh, we've got Costly Plunder, which is going to allow us to cash in some extra card draw. We've got Pawn of Ulamog, which is going to be a wonderful amplifying effect for those tithe collections at the church. And uh, it's always nice to have a sack out. We've got Bloodthumb Vampire, so... I will take it. And uh, we'll lead off with, I guess, just go and lead off with Urborg. Yeah, that's fine. Let's lead off with Urborg and then anything else. We're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Uh, we are playing Tasa Karlov, the official tithe collector of the church. So um, let's say that you can't pay your tithe to the church. We've implemented a new afterlife program to where if you can't pay uh, with monetary means, with either some gold coin or some money, uh, we will definitely be uh, sending you to the afterlife. So that way you can be an eternal servant of Athrius. So that's going to be one of the ways that we can... Uh, Make sure you pay your tithes to the church. So we're playing Tasa. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent, uh, you control to trigger. That ability triggers an additional time. Then creature tokens you control have vigilance and lifelink. Uh, playing gets to Shar and Cestral's Apostle. Uh, flying whenever you cast a historic spell, return target creature card with converting mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. And if you're keeping score at home, um, artifacts, the, uh, what is it? The historics are artifact legendaries. Or excuse me. Get down mana crib. Artifacts, Legendary, and Sagas are historic. There we go. <laughs> All right, so Pope's going to lead off with Mana Crypt. We'll see what else they get down. If not, then we'll probably lead. We might end up going for Blood Thumb Vampire and go for Costly Plunder. Ooh, Johnny Pride Mate. Okay, we need to find an answer for that. Hopefully, if we get down Pawn of Blue Mog, we can't. Man, I, a Johnny Pride Mate, I can't can't stand that card. <laughs> it's like one of those like incidental hate cards. I don't know why. Um... Yeah, I guess let's go and get down Bloodthorn Vampire. We'll get down Bloodthorn Vampire. We'll go for City of Brass next turn. Hopefully that allows us to get down a uh, extra white source. And then um, now that I think about it, we can probably end up going for Costly Plunder on Selfless Spirit. I think that'd be a lot better. But uh, yes, let's give a quick shout out to our sponsors. If you'd like to build your very own Church of Athreus, head over to mtgotraders.com. They've got you covered for all of your aristocrat and cleric needs. And let's give a shout out to inkgaming.com. If you use coupon code JOLT, uh, you will get 10% off your order and that will help to go back towards the channel. So that way, if you're looking for a custom play mat or something like that, you can go over there, and get one made and uh, get a discount and help the channel out and also let's say that you really enjoy one of my thumbnails and uh, you want to use it as a desktop wallpaper for personal use only um, I do have a link down in the description below so have fun with that and uh, I'm gonna start as new decks release this year I'm gonna be start releasing some of the background images uh, down in the description below all right so we got a Johnny's primate swinging in for two uh, that will knock us down to 28 and then um, fingers crossed we'll a white source if not we'll get down city of brass I was trying to delay the uh, yeah looks like we're gonna have to do that uh, let's get down I was trying to delay the uh, the damage we're taking but uh, we're gonna get down Selfless Spirit. Oh, they fixed that City of Brass trigger, which is really nice. It used to be to where um, it was like the mana would kind of like mess up sometimes when you're trying to get down Selfless Spirit, and it's like, oh, you need to take that damage. Okay, so anything else? Yeah, I guess we're simply just going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Um, if we don't hit the land drop, we are definitely going for Costly Plunder because we want to be able to hit the land drop. That way we can get down Tasa. Because um, the worst case scenario, if we hit the land drop, we kind of want to get down Pawn of Ulamog because that way it's going to work out perfectly for Tasa. We can really kind of amplify some of those uh, Pawn of Ulamog triggers or those tokens and really end up with some uh, really nice board state. But yeah, as far as this deck goes, this is pretty much kind of like the Church of Athreos, um, except we did kind of add a few more amplifying effects. And actually, a lot of the amplifying effects we do have in our hand. It's going to be Pawn of Ulamog and uh, Hollowed Spirit Keeper. But the core of the deck is still going to be that really nice black-white cleric. So... Can't wait. In fact, actually, actually, if you come across this video searching for Tasa, um, you don't know what the Church of Athreos is. Uh, just basically, just type in Church of Athreos into uh, YouTube, and you'll be able to see the uh, the Church of Athreos in all of its glory. I do a fun little intro for it, and uh, it's all about aristocrats and having a ton of fun. So, if you're new to the channel, if you're coming across this uh, via Tasa search. Be sure to check out the Church of Athreos, and we'll get you inducted into the church in no time. You know, we're a very welcoming church. We like to have all sorts of parishioners in the church. Ends up making, like, for a really nice... Oh, sort of fire and ice, protection from blue and red. Yeah, that's fine. we got black-white, so we can at least do something against that. Uh, the only We need to get into some sort of blood artist effect. That would definitely kind of help us... Uh, Hopefully kind of uh, stabilize against something like Sword of Fire and Ice, because that two damage will end up making a difference. Okay, so we don't hit that fourth land drop. Let's go and push in with two. 
Get him for two, this will knock him down to 25, and then we'll have to end up going for this costly plunder, which is not the most exciting thing in the world, but, um, yeah, we can't go another turn not making the land drop. Uh, let's go and tap down Urborg, sacrifice Selfless Spirit. Thank you, Selfless Spirit. Uh, get down Archangel, and then we do run into Mana Crypt, which will put us at Ranger of Eos. We can grab one of our ample. Yeah, I think I like this. So get down Mana Crypt. Let's go Ranger of Eos. The one, two, three, two off mana crypt. Now, if we can get into um, the one drop that allows us to get some, to gain some life, I can never remember the name of that card. It drives me nuts every time. Um, Soul Warden. <laughs> She's been in the church for so long, and I feel bad. Um, let's grab Soul Warden, and then we need to grab one more creature. I guess we can go for Weather Wayfarer. No, they're only sitting on two lands, so that's probably not going to help us out. Uh, this sort of seer would be another sack outlet. Yeah, I think I kind of like going for Soul Warden and Viscera Seer. Because let's say we get down Pond of Ulamog. Uh, we can start sacrificing Viscera Seer to get that scry going. The scurry. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go Viscera Seer. Because we are really far away from Weathered Wayfarer. Unfortunately. Oh, I'm sorry, Kiki. Sorry, my cat was asleep under my desk and I shifted and... <laughs> I kicked my cat again, uh, not on purpose, but uh, I don't. I don't. So I start talking, and she gets under there and starts sleeping, and I don't know. And then I shift up in my chair to make sure I have better posture. And next thing you know, she's I kick something furry, and she runs off. Like, why did you kick me? Um, every time that happens, I'm always reminded of a Reddit post that was, um, you know, if you could speak, if you could tell your pets like one sentence, what would you tell them? And this one guy left a comment saying like. I'd tell my dog that I, I never get up in the middle of the night just to kick him on my way to the bathroom. <laughs> like, Because basically like, he didn't realize his dog was sleeping in the in the pathway to the bathroom. And that's always one thing I wish I could tell my cat. If I ever kick you, it's, it, it is not on purpose. Okay, so we've got a Johnny's Pride Mate swinging in with a 4-4. Four, four. And what we can do, whenever it deals combat damage to a player... So we can simply just block with Ranger of Eos... Yeah, I think, I think I'm liking some blocks on this. Because we don't want them to get that trigger. So we go Ranger of Eos on a Johnny. And then we go Bloodthorn Vampire on Burnish Heart. Because that's going to force the crack. Yeah, we'll click OK. Um, we're going to go for Bloodthorn Vampire. We're going to sacrifice Ranger of Eos. I'd love to do this with Pond of Ulamog on the battlefield. But we want to kind of basically negate that four damage. And uh, I guess we could have taken it, but then they can send that two damage wherever. So either way, we're going to have to end up losing Ranger of Eos. So I'm still happy with this one. And then once Bloodthorn Vampire turns into a 3-3, three, three, that'll at least kind of force the uh, Burnish Heart uh, activation from our opponent. So hopefully if they had something planned for the second main phase, um, if they want to get those lands going, uh, they're going to have to go for it now. Now as far as next turn goes, we can go for Tesa if we want to. We can get down Tesa. I'm thinking we go Soul Warden. Since we do have Urborg, yeah, we can actually go Soul Warden, Viscera Seer, and then we can go Pond of Ulamog, and that'll really kind of start to amplify our um, the amount of life that we can gain, because that's one of the downsides to uh, this deck, is at least kind of starting off City of Brasses. We don't want to be taking a ton of damage and uh, lose the game that way. Let's go and choose Tails on this Mana Crypt here. Uh, lost that one. We are 0 for 1 on our Mana Crypt, and we do run into Scrub Land, which is very much welcomed. Uh, let's get down Scrub Land. Yeah, I think this is this is what we need to do. We need to set up a really nice turn for Tasa. So let's go Soul Warden, get her down. Let's go Viscera Seer. Let's gonna always yield to this trigger. That way we can just start gaining a ton of life. And then let's go Pawn of Ulamog. That's gonna be black and black. And then yeah, because there's not really much else we can do. Get down Pawn of Ulamog. Okay, I like that. And then anything else that last color is mana. No, we're gonna go and pass the turn to our opponent. Now, the only thing that we're missing at this point right now is some sort of Blood Artist effect or some sort of Zulaport Cutthroat effect. Uh, once we get that down on the battlefield, that's what's going to make Tasa so much fun. Is she's basically just like a, a dead Panharmonicon, you know. You get that amplifying effect on Pond of Ulamogs, next thing you know. And that's what makes her work so well with an Aristocrats is that, you know, you can get down a ton of triggers with Pond of Ulamog and get a ton of tokens. But that's going to basically turn Pond of Ulamog into like a... I'm trying to think how to describe it. So when you're doing Aristocrats, you almost kind of have these multipliers in your head. Like Pond of Ulamog is a multiplier times two because you're trying to add up the amount of activations you need to close the game out with triggers. And so um, 
with Pawn of Uthamog being able to get double tokens on the battlefield, that basically just really amplifies your creature count to just, just really high level to where you're not really trying to... You can rest assured that you're going to be ending up being able to close the game out with Zulaport or Blood Arts since you know because sometimes if you don't have that amplifying effect, you can do it with a ton of creatures, but it's just really hard sometimes. And so, but something like Tesa, you know, turning Pawn of Ulamog into like a three times multiplier on creatures, hey, that's always nice because that really kind of helps you push those uh, those game plans. All right, so with the Johnny's Pride made, we can go for that sacrifice ability again if we want to end up sacrificing. Because that'll be a few extra Pawn of Ulamog triggers, too. And that'll leave us with one extra sack outlet. Yeah, let, let's do that. Because we can really kind of start to go away with Soul Warden. We can get on Ravo Soul Tinder. We can bring that creature back. Yeah, I think I like that. So let's go for Bloodthorn Vampire on a Johnny Pride Mate. We're going to click OK. Uh, let's go ahead and go for uh, Viscera Seer. And also with this Scry, it's going to allow us to hopefully kind of find something just a little bit easier. Or something to kind of help us further our game plan. Even something, some sort of spot removal on Tashar or some sort of way to kind of blow the entire board up. Yes, we're definitely going to use that ability. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Now we're really getting some fun stuff going. Uh, let's get the Scry. Recruit of the Guard. Yes, that's going to be uh, a wonderful way to recruit Blood Artists. And so we're going to have to do this kind of like little dance show. And now the good thing about us getting these tokens down is that we can basically just kind of dodge the Sword of Fire and Ice. Now they can put the Sword of Fire and Ice onto Tishar, and that will kind of keep us in a weird position to where we need to get some sort of, uh, when it enters the battlefield. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I, I, it's one of those moments where you see a magic card for the first time, you're like, what does that card do again? And so, but yeah, I love the art on that one. looks pretty cool. But yeah, we'll need to get down some sort of flyer to stop Tashar with that sort of fire and ice. Because basically, with that being our last sack outlet, uh, they can definitely send that two damage over to that creature. Uh, let's go and choose tails on this one. Lost the flip. 0 for 2 on our mana crypt triggers. And then Recruiter of the Guard. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we can go Recruiter into Tesa, which is really going to amplify those little Drazi spawn tokens. Let's see, because they are at 19, and we can get some pretty good stuff done. Yeah, I think I kind of like this. So let's go Recruiter of the Guard. We're going to gain that life from Soul Warden. Yes, we're definitely going to use that ability. And I think I like getting, yeah, let's grab Blood Artist, because that's going to work with the Sack Outlet. Or, excuse me, with the, some sort of board wipe. Grab Blood Artist. Or actually, if we end up going Tesa, and we go for the Chump Blocker again... Yeah, l let's do that. Uh, let's get down Tesa. That way we can just get down Blood Artist for next turn and end up with a ton of uh, ton of activations. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? No. We're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Uh, we got Viscera Seer. Let's say they do end up sending that Sword of Fire and Ice over onto Tashar. Um, we could have gotten Unravo Soul Tender, but I want to try to set up some sort of Aristocrats package. Uh, because at this point right now, each creature is going to be one Blood Artist trigger. And with Taste on the battlefield, there's going to be two more tokens. So it's basically they're going to count for three. So if we let's say that we sacrifice Recruiter of the card, there's going to be three loss of life for our opponent and three life gain. Uh, same thing with Soul Warren. There's going to be another three. That's going to be six. And so depending on where they shift that Sword of Fire and Ice trigger, we might be able to really get some pretty good stuff done for next turn. Because let's say we go Blood Artist and we flash it, we get down a Hollowed Spirit Keeper. And we can kind of set it up to where we can get a lot of creature cards in the graveyard. Because we've already got at least three creature cards in the graveyard with Hollowed Spirit Keeper. Yeah. We'll have some pretty good stuff to do for next turn. Now, the only downside is we can get down Ravo Soul Tender if we need to start bringing some stuff back. But uh, yeah, let's go and let them swing it for four. That's going to be four total commander damage and put us down to 18. And let's see where they decide to send this two damage. Pretty much the best option for them to choose right now would definitely be Viscera Seer because that's going to be our sack outlet. But um, we'll see how they decide to go for that. Okay, so they will end up be uh, targeting Viscera Seer. Yeah, let's sacrifice Viscera Seer. And we're going to sacrifice Viscera Seer to its own ability. Oh, look at these Pawn of Ulamog triggers. And uh, what we could have done is we could have sacked the entire board to get a ton of Eldrazi spawn tokens, because these are technically sack outlets ourselves. But, um, yeah, we're, we're okay with it at this point. So we're always yes to Pawn of Ulamog. 
and then always yield. End up with some beautiful life gain. And the suit the scry's mana confluence is definitely going to put that on the bottom for right now. And it's going to be two damage to no creature. But yeah, if we get down Rabo Soul Tender, that'll at least buy us an additional turn from uh to Shar swing in for two. And then we get in this position to where we can actually almost go for Vault of the Archangel and uh, kind of push in with a really nice lifelink too. But yeah, let's see what our opponents end up getting on their second main phase. Okay, so we've got our Mana Crypt Trigger. Let's go and choose Tails on this one. <laughs> Hopefully, we don't go 0 for 3 on our Mana Crypt Triggers. Thankfully, we got Soul Warden on the battlefield, and she's really helped us kind of ease the, uh, the tension of these Mana Crypt Triggers. And it looks like we might see a uh, Field of Rune activation from our opponent. So let's see what land they decide to target. <sighs> There's not really much we can do. I mean, if we want to get, save some extra mana for Vault Trigger, we can certainly do that. Yeah, we'll at least go and tap it in response to that, and then we'll still get down, I think at this point, between City of Brass and Scrubland, we'll probably just grab it Plains. Yeah, since we do have double Plains, it wouldn't hurt to grab that. So if we go for Vault of the Archangel activation, that's going to be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that'll put us at 3 total mana, which will still kind of give us the option to go for um, Hauled Spirit Keeper or Blood Artist. But I think Vault is not really where we want to be. We just don't have the creature base for it right now. So, unfortunately, we're going to lose that black mana. Uh, let's go and choose Tails on this Mana Crypt Trigger. One the flip, one for three on our Mana Crypt Triggers. And then we draw into Marsh Flats, which is a wonderful way to kind of bounce back. Yeah, so we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got eight total mana. I think I like getting down Rabos because that really kind of amplifies our board state. It makes these Eldrazi spawn tokens a lot easier, too. Um, we can kind of push into some of these Pride Mates and these Haunted Witnesses, too. Yeah, let's go for that. So let's get down Blood Artist. Let's go for Mar let's Crack Marsh Flats because either way, we're going to be taking some damage. We're going to be able to gain some really nice life from Pano Ulamog if, you know, if need be. Actually, we'll just go and grab a Swamp, because I'd hate to just lose the last two damage, because I wanted to shock in a God of the Shrine. So we're going to grab Swamp. Let's go for Ravo Soul Tinder. Okay, that's going to make all of our creatures 2-2s two and 3-3s. Three and swing with a bunch of 1-2s. So if we swing with those Eldrazi spawn tokens, that's going to give us some Blood Art its triggers, which is definitely something that we can use. So I think I like swinging in with the Eldrazi spawn tokens. And we want, definitely want to hold on to Soul Warden, and we definitely want to hold on to Pawn of Ulamog. But if we swing with Pawn of Ulamog, that's... Yeah, I think we're actually in a pretty good position to swing the entire crew. We'll definitely hold off on Soul Warden. They're going to block on Recruiter of the Guard on Trusty Pack. That would be definitely a good block. And then we've got the other ones that we can... You know, Johnny's Pride Mate's going to eat one of these spawn tokens... And that is just basically kind of complicated as far as some sort of... Yeah, I like that. Let's go and do that. Let's push in with the crew. All right. So we got the Eldrazi spawn token swinging. We've got Tasa swinging in trying to collect a tithe from a Tashar. And then we still got Ravo Soul Tinder to block on Tashar for next turn. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Settle the wreckage. Oh, that is <laughs> brutal. Oh, this is why you want a sack outlet on the battlefield. Oh my god. <laughs> that hurts. That really does. All right. <laughs> okay, then anything else we're gonna go and pass. Oh man, that. All right, so we've got Ravo Soul Tinder. We can still bring back a Bloodthorn Vampire back out of the graveyard. Uh, that can be our sack outlet, but we lost Pawn of Ulamog, which is a little bit of a bummer, but. Uh... <laughs> There's just those times in Magic where you f you're like playing Magic and then you feel like it's like a Yu-Gi-Oh anime show where it's like, haha, you fell into my trap card. I'm like, ah, oh, man. Anyway, good play by our opponent. So we're going to try to bounce back from this. We still have Hollowed Spirit Keeper, which is going to allow us to get some pretty nice amplifying effects. Um, the only downside is with Field of Ruin, um, if they start going for Field of Ruin activations, our opponent did notice that we didn't have a lot more basics in the battlefield. You know, they exiled about six or seven creatures, and we have no more basics. So we're kind of, uh, we're kind of dead on board to, uh, yeah, we ain't got no lands. So we've got at least, we've got ourselves a clock. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We do have ten total mana, so at least that kind of allows us to 
Worst case scenario, get down Tesa, uh, still get down another sack outlet out of the graveyard. All right, so opponent's going to be swinging up to Char. Yeah, because if we end up... So if we block with Ravos on to Char, that's going to get rid of us not being able to get down some sort of amplifying effect. Then they're going to be able to send two damage either to to Ravos himself, Blood Artist, either way. So yeah, I think we kind of need to block on this one. I'm not wild about this block. But, yeah. We just want to stop that sort of Fire and Ice trigger, definitely from our opponent. But um, if you're keeping score at home, it is not looking so hot. <laughs> we did have a good board state developed. That sort of Fire and Ice with Tashar is definitely going to... Uh, Going to make our life a little bit of a living pain. All right, so we're going to choose Tails on this one. Uh, one the flip, two for four on our Mana Crypt triggers, and let's see what we draw into. Draw into Irid Mesa, which is... Uh, that's not so hot. Um, yeah, I guess we go for Tesa. That's going to be one, two. And we want to try to dodge the... Uh, I think we still have Godless Shrine for Irid Mesa, which is will end up working out for us. And let's go for... Let's go for Hollowed Spirit Keeper. Okay, we're going to get down Hollowed Spirit Keeper. Um, at this point right now, we're just hoping our maybe our opponent just goes for a board wipe or something. If something ends up happening to Hollowed Spirit Keeper, that will be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That will end up being 10 Spirit Tokens on the battlefield, so that will make a pretty big difference. Um, but yeah, this is... Uh, we're having a little bit of trouble collecting our ties today from Tashar, unfortunately. But um, but yeah, either way, we've had a pretty good little uh, board state develop with Tasty. You can definitely see where just having a Panharmonicon style effect on creatures dying, there's just so many different options that you can use. You know, we had Pond of Ulamog, we have Hollowed Spirit Keeper, we've got Blood Artist. Um, there's just a ton of options and a lot of synergy, uh, depending on how you would build your actual Tasty deck. You know, whether it's Human Clerics or straight up something like Blood Gas, any sort of effect like that. It is a, uh, yeah, as soon as I saw Taste of Printed, I was like, that's insanity. I love it. All right, so we've got the Char swinging in. That's going to be 4-4. Four, four. It's going to put us down to 20, and it will be 8 total commander damage uh, with an additional uh, Sword of Fire and Ice trigger. So we'll see where they decide to send it. I guess that this, yeah, I'm about to say, you could make a case for Soul Warden or Blood Artist, but that's definitely going to take care of Blood Artist. Let's get the uh, double amplifying effects up top. And I think as far as sack outlets go, we do have a couple different ways to sacrifice Hollowed Spirit Keeper. But most of our sack outlets are going to be Visitor Seer, Bloodthorn Vampire. And I think we might have Yehenny in here too. I'm pretty sure Yehenny's in here. So hopefully if we can find some sort of sack outlet, that'll at least allow us to kind of stop the Tashar bleeding uh, once we get all these spirit tokens. on the, Or even something like a board wipe. Because uh, that's going to get rid of all the creatures into the graveyard. And uh, that'll allow us to get some pretty good tokens going. Our opponent's going to go for Walking Ballista for 5. Okay, so they can start to ping us for 5 if they want to, and they basically have instant speed access to wipe our entire board. The only good thing is we at least have some sort of insurance policy with Hollowed Spirit Keeper. Um, the only downside is, let's say we end up going for some sort of Aristocrats win. Um, it's going to be really hard to play around that walk and Ballista with instant speed action. So, But at least we do have some sort of insurance policy about our opponent blasting Hollowed Spirit Keeper. Uh, let's crack Arid Mason. Let's grab that Godless Shrine. That way we don't have to mess with the uh, that field of ruin anymore. Uh, not going to pay two life. And let's see what we draw into. Mana Crypt Trigger. We're going to just Tails on this one. It's going to be three damage, and then hopefully Eily, Eternal Pilgrim. Well, that is an additional sack outlet. Yeah, that's what we needed. Let's go and get this down. You know, this might we might see some sort of walking ballista action from our opponent, but at least at this point right now, having a sack outlet with an activated ability is definitely something we want to see. So, let's, okay, that's not going to draw anything out. So at least now we kind of get into this weird stalemate of we can start sacrificing creatures with Eile, sacrifice Hollowed Spirit Keeper, Spirit Keeper to kind of dodge any sort of walking ballista activations. Uh, we can also go for, you know, sacrificing Soul Warden, because basically at this point right now, we've got a ton of options to 
I think we can outstack the walking ballista as far as us sacrificing Hollowed Spirit after we sacrifice Soul Warden and after we sacrifice Tasa. Now, the main thing that we do need to do is that we need to make sure we keep Tasa on the battlefield once we go for that uh, activation. And at this point right now, we're going to go and let them kind of string through some of these uh, these damages. If they're going to send some of the damage, we'll wait to get some of this stuff on the stack. Uh, that way, it's going to really kind of uh, make it a little bit harder for them to, to for them to do that. Okay, so this is going to be the last damage on the stack. Let's go for an Eilie activation. We're going to go ahead and sacrifice. Now, at this point, that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to be 12 tokens on the battlefield, and that's going to be a lot of life gain. Do we want to sacrifice that life gain simply to get a few extra bodies on the battlefield? Because that'll be 12 tokens. There's only technically one flyer in the air. Yeah, because that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That'll be 12. We've got a 14. That'll be some really nice damage in the air. Yeah, I think what we end up doing is we just sacrifice Hollowed Spirit Keeper. Yeah, I think that because I, I like this life gain action. And this does force them to potentially end up using going the last walking blister trigger for Soul Warden. If that is the case, then we can still put Soul Warden into the graveyard. And then we also put Tasa into the graveyard too. Because at this point right now, yeah, we've already got the double Tasa effects on the battlefield. So let's actually go ahead and go for that line of play right now. So we're going to sacrifice Soul Warden. We're getting a little bit of life off of that Soul Warden. And like I said, this might be good, but at least we're going to be able to stop the Tashar ability. And let's go ahead and send, we need to send Tasa to the graveyard. And this is where I'll kind of explain what it's like to um, have a Sackalot that can sacrifice its own self, which is basically, um, you know, at this point we could get uh, Eile into the graveyard, but unfortunately with says sacrifice another creature, we can't use that ability. And that's a little bit of a bummer. Uh, they start, you know, something like Viscera Seer or Blood Artist, you can, not Blood Artist, but the, uh, the other one, you can basically just, you know, sacrifice them too. All right, so we've got 18 tokens on the battlefield. Uh, we're going to gain a little bit of life from Eile activation, and then that's going to be the last... If you have 10 more life than you're starting, yeah, we started at 30, so... Anything else? No, that's fine. All right, so we're going to have a bunch of spirit tokens on the battlefield. Um, at this point right now, this should be lethal, so we're going to keep our fingers crossed that this is going to be able to work because we've got 18 tokens on the battlefield. Um, we're going to have to block with one of them onto Char. Um, they can still end up going for Walking Ballista, but I think... As long as we declare a blocker onto Char, that's going to put it down to 17. They can blast one of them. That still should be lethal. Um, even if they swing in with the entire crew, we're looking at uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we can still take a really big hit from our opponent at this point right now. It basically just kind of depends on what sort of uh, cards they have in their hand. But you can see where we're able to kind of bounce back from that. A little bit of a blown start with the our sack outlet missing with Blood Artist. And you can really see how some sort of amplifying effect like Hollowed Spirit Keeper. Let's say we did have sack outlet on the battlefield and Blood Artist. How quick it'd be able to for us to uh, just close the game out with Tasa, getting those activations going. But I love Hollowed Spirit Keeper. It is definitely a great card to run your deck. But let's go ahead and sit. This game has kind of drug on for a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to take a break until our opponent decides what they actually want to do. Oh, never mind. All right, so they're going to go for the Walking Ballista activation actually on us. Yeah, that's fine. That's going to put us down to 26. We can actually declare no blockers on this and uh, be in a really good position. So we'll see what they decide to do. Oh no, opponent has our steer command. Destroy all creatures with converted mana cost three or less. <sighs> all right, that's going to get it. We tried our best, man. We tried. We had two board states that closed the game out, but our opponent's going to get it on this one. Good game. <laughs> now we can somehow make it work with some sort of uh, living death effect. That'll bring everybody back. So basically, we're kind of in top deck mode. It's not 100% good game to our opponent, but. Um, it's not looking good. So they're going to get down the pride. That's going to be... Oh, that's a bummer. Uh, double strike. Creatures you control a first strike have double strike. All right, so that's just straight up, and that's just straight up vigilance. Yeah, so at this point right now, we need living death. Uh, we have living death, and we have rally the ancestors. That's going to be 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 
uh, they're gonna bring back a pride mate so uh, we're pretty much online for a lot of different cards to maybe close the game out that's gonna be living death that's going to be a rally the ancestors a demonic tutor any sort of way to bring our creatures back onto the battlefield so we're gonna keep our fingers crossed that we can get this we're gonna choose tails on this one and lost the flip and we'll see what the draw is oh twilight prophet that is not uh, gonna get it done we do have the city's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll have the city's blessing with Twilight Prophet. But we're basically going to have to chump block on Tashar. That's going to be them swinging in for eight, ten, eleven. Yeah, good game to our opponent. Man, that was good. A lot of back and forth. Good game. Tashar is going to get on, so we cannot collect the tithe from Tashar, but you can definitely see how we put the deck through the ropes. Um, we got uh, some sort of Aristocrats package going, and then we also put a uh, enough on, lethal on the board with Hollowed Spirit Keeper uh, to get all those tokens. So, but unfortunately, our opponent's going to get it with that Austere Command. Very nicely timed Austere Command. So, a uh, good game to our opponent. It's definitely a well played out game. And if you enjoyed tithe collecting with Tesa, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.